Godzilla is one of the most powerful characters we've ever seen, as we go over the science detailing exactly how powerful he really is. Welcome to Trick Theory, as we add on to the growing list of childhood characters for me to ruin in another sweet analysis. Godzilla, or as he was first called Gojira, is a 250 to 300 million year old prehistoric reptilian dinosaur from the Permian period, which ended with a rather large mass extinction, causing Godzilla to take to the Earth's deep oceans, whereas an amphibious monster, he either slept or lived in relative peace for the many millennia that followed. That is, until one day in 1954, when he was brutally disturbed and mutated, growing him to enormous proportions. When the American military decided to test its new hydrogen bomb off of the island known as Bikini Atoll, with the scientist Dr. Yamane proposing that Godzilla was peacefully living among others of his kind before the bomb wiped out their habitat along with most if not all of Godzilla's kin. Now with a burned and enraged prehistoric kaiju resurfacing, first taking out nearby boats before heading to the nearest major landmass to flatten its cities, leaving behind radioactive footprints and making areas completely unlivable for years to come if he unleashes his atomic breath, eventually in the movie a Japanese scientist comes up with a brilliant invention to kill the monster once and for all, before it wipes out any more cities. Upon turning on his invention called the Oxygen Destroyer, both Godzilla and the scientists were completely dissolved in Tokyo Bay, a highly destructive weapon that recently reappeared and nearly killed Godzilla in King of the Monsters. Other Godzilla movies that have come out in recent years always keep the same nuclear bomb connection, except the ones where he came from space or the souls of dead soldiers. But Godzilla's main story has stayed mostly the same, adding in a few things to freshen up the plot like the Earth being hollow and Godzilla always being a giant apex creature, rather than a recently mutated dinosaur. Either way, the canon Godzilla, not this, always comes to the public's attention after being hit with a hydrogen bomb, which is crucial to the entire point of the character, since Godzilla was created to be a literal walking metaphor for the pain and destruction the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki caused in the conclusion of World War II. It's more recently that Godzilla has also come to symbolize a force of Mother Nature that is meant to protect, restore, and maintain Earth's various ecosystems, especially those that were severely damaged by humanity, ultimately showing that we need to take better care of our planet. In the stories, Godzilla is eventually accompanied and often saved by the heroic titan known as Mothra, who has two miniature fairies that speak on her behalf, who are present in every movie featuring Mothra in one form or another to date. Godzilla fights against the aggressive flying reptile Rodan, and eventually comes face to face with King Ghidorah, a monster based upon the ancient Japanese dragon Yamata no Orochi, who had eight heads and eight tails, with Ghidorah arriving to Earth inside a large meteorite after decimating Venus and at times Mars. And it's almost as cool to see characters from my childhood resurface with modern technology as it is to spend hours upon hours applying the stem fields to them. Now with that, Godzilla's feats, powers, and capabilities abilities are incredible. Godzilla originally was stated to be 50 meters or 164 feet tall, about one-sixth the height of the Eiffel Tower, a height that modern Japanese films like Godzilla Minus One have maintained, with him originally weighing 20,000 tons. Since then, other iterations have him growing anywhere from 80 to 100 meters tall, weighing 50,000 tons, and eventually we've got the 120 meter tall Godzilla we see in Legendary films, who weighs a massive 99,643 tons, or as much as a modern U.S. aircraft carrier, or 500 adult blue whales. The only version of the character that outgrows any of these is one 20,000 years into the far future that continues to grow to be over 300 meters tall, and also weighs 100,000 tons. Godzilla's average swimming speed is clocked at around 40 knots, or 46 miles per per hour, or 74 kilometers per hour, which seems to really be a casual swimming speed for the big guy, seeing how he has been shown to run on land at speeds of anywhere from 100 miles per hour to so much more, specifically in the scene where Godzilla lands in Boston and charges King Ghidorah in order to portray the scale of these creatures and to make the resulting clash look as epic as possible, the VFX team responsible realized that they had Godzilla running at 200 
200 miles per hour or 322 kilometers per hour, creating a shockwave when the two collide. And this shockwave is rather interesting, as it means that Godzilla, or at least his Titan fists, can actually move much faster. You see, shockwaves are all about speed, and in order for a shockwave to occur, the object must be moving faster than the local speed of sound, or otherwise in air be moving faster than 767 miles per hour or 1,235 kilometers per hour, which makes Godzilla one fast moving lizard when he needs to be, and could very well mean that his swimming speed, seeing how fast he moves from areas like Fiji to Hong Kong, or otherwise a distance of about 8,246 kilometers in what, thanks to the internet, has been shown to be in 5 minutes and 56 seconds, meaning that Godzilla would be swimming at speeds of over 83,000 kilometers per hour or under 52,000 miles per hour, given that he could be using tunnels in the hollow earth to help shorten the distance and speed. As fast as Godzilla is, he seems to be packing even more when it comes to his feats of strength. The original 20,000 ton Godzilla who recently made his return in minus one was capable of easily picking up and smashing the 30,000 ton Ghidorah repeatedly, could easily rip out and toss steel bridges, lifted the 25,000 ton Gigan with just his tail, and headlocked and threw a 40,000 ton Mecha Godzilla like a shot put over thousands of meters, along with him dishing out some pretty epic flying drop kicks. In recent times, Godzilla's size and strength have only increased with his newer versions being capable of toppling 60,000 ton Mutos, lifting and throwing a 120,000 ton Mecha Godzilla, and being able to slam Titan so hard underwater as to create large earthquakes that are, at the very least, a magnitude 6 if not greater as they cause nearby volcanoes to erupt. But Godzilla's strength is far from his greatest and most destructive power. And we should note that Godzilla's durability seems to be off the charts as well, as any conventional naval cannon of any size, harpoon missiles, along with any missiles the military could think to throw at him, he simply shrugs off. Godzilla has taken near direct blows from kiloton to megaton sized nuclear warheads with the nukes concussive forces, heat and radiation, not doing much more than angering and feeding him. Godzilla has been frozen solid, takes naps deep in the Earth's molten magma, withstanding the pressures of 200,000 psi that the Earth's crust exerts on him. He can survive falls from the upper atmosphere, the mineral composition in his bones render them nearly unbreakable, and in what is possibly Godzilla's most ridiculous feat in this video is the fact that coming from the Permian period and living throughout the ages, Godzilla is said to have been close to ground zero when the massive 1 trillion ton Chicxulub asteroid smacked into the Earth. And despite the incredible blast wave, Godzilla survived, likely retreating into the oceans. And Godzilla is likely so durable and very resistant to any cause of death thanks to his rather ridiculous healing factor. Throughout his history, Godzilla is able to almost instantly heal from any injury he sustains. Healing from deep stab wounds, poison, nuclear eating bacteria, mines blowing apart his face, being melted at sun-like temperatures, and regenerating like Deadpool if he happens to break into pieces. Godzilla doesn't even need to necessarily breathe, as he has survived living on planet X, which is a planet with no atmosphere. But let's talk about the big one, Godzilla's true power, being his atomic breath. Thanks to the radioactive energy present in Godzilla's body, he can use his bio-nuclear circulatory system to trigger a reaction that starts at the base of his spine, climbing up the shards on his back until he shoots the radiation out of his mouth. With his atomic breath, Godzilla can easily melt steel, flatten cities, blow back the 141,000 ton Ghidorah, and has been measured to be well over 180 times more powerful than the largest nuclear bomb ever set off. But a true testament to the power of this attack is when Godzilla used it to drill a tunnel thousands of kilometers through the Earth. Using his hot as lightning or near 30,000 degrees Celsius breath to utterly vaporize the rock in what has been written to be in just 10 seconds. But then we have Godzilla in minus one. The Godzilla with arguably 
arguably the most destructive atomic breath or heat ray ever seen. In Minus One, Godzilla makes his way to the city of Ginza, where he fully unleashes his new atomic blast. That completely annihilates the city in one shot, hitting the civilians with a powerful blast wave and leaving behind a massive mushroom cloud. This version of the attack is by far the strongest version we have ever seen, basically being the exact equivalent of a nuclear bomb going off, which is what was intended as Godzilla's new atomic breath is meant to literally mirror the destructive power and horror of human warfare that inspired his creation in the first place. And not to mention he can use it to fly. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. Godzilla's original name, Gojira, comes from pairing the words Gorilla and Kurajira, which translates to Gorilla Well. And he's actually a registered citizen in Japan, with the longest running film franchise ever, being around almost as long as characters like Superman and as cool as Wolverine, with us going over other characters' power and the science behind how Wolverine's claws work in this video. Remember, it's all a trick. See you in the next one.